morning ladies welcome back to fruitfully feminine i am gabrielle and today i'm going to be talking about my 23 me results as you probably can tell from the title it is a 20 degree night here in december in kansas so if you want to get like me get your robe on get your little jammies on i have my night count on my robe on because it's cold i was gonna make some hot chocolate or something warm but all i have is eggnog and that's cold so you want grab a little tea and join me for a cozy little warm night in if it's cold where you're at I thought it'd be fun to make this because I make my serious ones and then I make my cooking and makeup and hair videos and I wanted to make something just fun and lighter and I was thinking about ideas and I have some funny ideas and stuff with friends but I just wanted to do something intimate and cozy and warm on this cold night and I was like I bet <laughs> It sounds dumb saying it out loud now, but I'm already going for it. I thought it would be fun to do my 23andMe results because I love watching other videos of people um, getting their results and seeing what is like them and what they predict that's not like them. I'm going to put all my results over here so you can look at them while I'm reading them. But basically, I am 100% European. <laughs> That was actually a surprise to me. Apparently my biological grandpa is 50% Native American and that's what we've been told our whole life. And it's either not true or I didn't get any of it. I am 90% Northwestern European, basically 91%. I am mostly British and Irish. I was pretty sure I was Irish and French. British was a shock to me. We were told we were German, Hungarian, Irish, and French. So when I saw British and Ger Irish, I was like, okay. That's cool. And then 34.4% French and German. So that part was all basically right. I'm 3.5% Scandinavian. Okay. <laughs> and then the rest I'm basically like, it's, it's just such a small percentage that I don't think it's worth reading, I guess. 14.1% of that said broadly Northwestern European. And we actually have a tiny bit of Southern European. So Spanish and Portuguese, as you see there. And a tiny bit of Italiano. That part is actually not the most interesting part. I usually watch the videos and it just makes sense and a lot of people are more diverse than um, I am I don't have I'm completely European so a lot of people it's interesting to be like they've got a little bit of black and Asian and, and Jewish in them and so I felt like yeah that was not the interesting part what was interesting to me was the traits part of this whole thing there's this whole section called wellness where you find out how your traits your genes your DNA affects sleep and diet and exercise my caffeine consumption I was more likely to consume more and I would say that's wrong because I don't drink caffeine on a moral principle but when I did I definitely love it <laughs> not really soda and that's because I have really bad acid reflux but I loved soda and I loved coffee and I still do love coffee if I was tempted with soda I would not be tempted when I'm tempted with coffee and I do drink decaf just as far as caffeine goes I intentionally don't drink caffeine the deep sleeper part yeah that's a million thousand trillion percent me <laughs> you could ask any of my friends and I have slept through everything I will sleep through thousands of alarms now that I'm on a disciplined schedule I get up when I need to get up but because I'm a deep sleeper if I like I could tell myself I have to be up at six but if I'm not gonna get fired from a job or my children aren't dying or I don't have something to go to I every weekend every Saturday I'm like I will get up at 6 30 I'm just gonna try it 9 45 rolls around and I'm like yeah that didn't happen that's a discipline part but as just for deep sleep people would say they wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom or they heard a noise and I'm like what are you doing? You don't, you're asleep. How are you? <laughs> you're in another state. Your consciousness, consciousness is gone. You're in your subconscious. It's taken over. I mean, yeah, I've had people walk into my room. I've had pe conversations with people and they say I talked to them and they, I texted them or they called me and I answered. I have no recollection. Like I am, when I'm asleep, my body is taken over. My friends call her Sleep Gabrielle, but we don't like to talk about her, so we'll move on. Genetic weight predisposed to weigh more than average. See my fat Gabrielle video for that. Yeah, definitely. That is true. Definitely. My alcohol flush reaction, that one's interesting to me because I, again, I don't drink alcohol, but when I did, I do flush. So that was the first one that was really wrong, technically. I definitely flush. I'll get like two, three sips in and I'm 
red. Lactose intolerant, likely tolerant. That one was also wrong. I'm definitely not tolerant. I drink milk all the time. I eat ice cream as much as I can. <laughs> as much as I want, I guess, because I, if I ate as much as I could, I would eat a lot more. But I definitely don't handle milk well. I can't hold my milk. Glassy. It said common in elite power athletes. I could open that arrow up and figure it out, but I have never been toned or athletic or in shape or fit enough in my life to know if that is true. I absolutely don't believe it, but if I shaped up and gained muscle, I might gain it like a power athlete. I don't even know how to measure that. We're, we're gonna be on to the next one. I have a 50-50% of being able to match a musical pitch. I'm gonna be honest, I've been told by multiple people I have a terrible singing voice, and multiple people I have an incredible singing voice. I think it depends on the song, but I'm just gonna be honest with you, I don't know what a pitch is. I can't read music. <laughs> I don't have the part of the brain that tells you that notes make noises that you can copy. <laughs> so I guess that means I can't make a pitch, but if someone said do this and they did it, I can exactly copy them. But if someone said sing A and they pressed A on a piano, I can't. I can't do it. I'm really good at impressions and accents so I can copy people. I cannot listen to an instrument and be like, that's a harmony or melody. I don't know what <laughs> those things mean. <laughs> I sound like an idiot when I talk about music. And I'm really not, but we're just, we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on. It says likely that I, I do have the asparagus pee, <laughs> the asparagus smell. And I actually don't. I think it was 13 or 14 when I found out about it, someone said, I don't wanna eat asparagus because my pee. And I was like, what happens to your pee? What, do you pee out asparagus? And they're like, no, no, it smells bad. And I was like, asparagus smells good. And they're like, my, my pee smells bad after I eat asparagus. And I was like, that's made up, you just had bad smelling pee. I asked around and no one in my family has it, but I think we all have the genetic marker or trait for it, so I, none of us have ever smelled it. This one says, bitter taste, likely can taste. I assure you guys I can taste. Moving on, less likely than average to have had a bunion. Don't know what that is. I'm just kidding, I know they're like something on your feet, but I've never had one, so I guess, yeah. <laughs> I'm. Not yet. Cheek dimples, likely no dimples. No dimples. <laughs> this part was so funny to me. It says, I have a slightly higher odds of disliking cilantro. You know how like 50% of people taste cilantro as soap and 50% love it? Cilantro is like my third favorite smell and my second favorite taste. Maybe third favorite taste. The point is I love cilantro. I absolutely love cilantro. I think I mentioned it in my 20 things to do in your single video when I was talking about gardening. I absolutely love cilantro. I love it. It's my favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite herb by far. Cleft chin, likely no cleft chin. I always thought that was a cleft. I think it's a chin dimple. And when I'm fatter, it comes out more. <laughs> when I was really fat, I could see it, like, it was like all the fat would surround it and I have fat chin. Yeah, I don't have a cleft. <laughs> earlobe type, likely detached. Nope, <laughs> I've got attached earlobes. Um, yeah, yeah, they got that one wrong as well. I talked to my friend who'd also taken this test and he said that pretty much every European person's gonna have wet earwax, so I don't really know what it means to not have it. Are there people that have crusty earwax? Likely brown or hazel eyes. Um. Can you see my eyes? Yeah, you can't see them super well. You can only see them when I have sun hitting my face in my videos. Um, and here it gets dark at five now. So that's when I get off work. So there's no way. It depends on what I wear. Some people, most people just say I have hazel. Well, I say I have gray. They look gray to more people. Some people say I have green. My sister thinks I have purple. She's a weirdo. Um, if I wear purple, it looks like I have purple eyes. If I wear green, green eyes. They don't change color. I always thought that was weird when people say their eyes change color. I think it's just what they're wearing. My eyes don't change color. They just, color brings them out in different ways, so. I thought the fear of heights thing was really interesting because I didn't know that was a genetic predisposition. It says I was less like in it, and I definitely, I mean, I don't have, I don't think I have a fear of heights. I don't have a desire to skydive or anything like that. I've gone cliff jumping and you always get butterflies when you're at the top, but I don't think that's fear. I think it's just adrenaline and 
nervousness, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know many people get, that can stand at the top of a cliff and feel nothing. The more likely to have a fear of public speaking is also interesting because not only this, and I guess it's not really that public, but I did plays and musicals my whole life. I was always a theater kid and <laughs> I wonder if maybe I did, I always would like shake and freak out before I got on. As soon as I was on stage, it was all gone. And I was like, I'm gonna go out there 10 more times. And every time I went backstage, I was like, right ready to come back on. But before the first entrance, I was always panicked. I mean, like I felt like I was gonna throw up. So maybe it, I do have a fear and I just never thought it was a fear. I thought it was just nervousness. So I, I don't know if that's true or not, but never let it stop me. Finger length ratio it says likely my ring finger is longer. I don't know what they mean longer than, but if it's longer than this guy, it's not. My ring finger shorter. It is longer than my pinky and thumb though, so good job. Good job, 23andMe. <laughs> I'm more likely than average to have flat feet. I don't know what that means. <gasps> is that flat? Is that not an arch, this thing that goes in? <laughs> freckles. I likely have a lot of freckles, so. Yep. <laughs> I thought this was interesting because I thought everyone, that seems just biologically a fact. When you go out in the sun, it makes your hair lighter. The hair, it just is a thing. Um, I always get a, like I have red in my hair, but it always comes out really strongly in the summer. It almost looks like I have red hair when I'm just standing in the sun. Yeah, I definitely do experience it, which they say I do, but I just kind of thought everyone did. I thought it was like, yeah, it's the sun. <laughs> the sun doesn't affect people's hair in different ways, but who's the idiot now? Likely straight or wavy? Yeah, I don't don't have straight hair. <laughs> this is straightened. I definitely have wavy. I don't have curly, which I guess they hit the nail on the head with that one. It says I'm less likely to have thick hair, which I thought was interesting because growing up, I had such thick hair. Brushes broke all the time in my hair, which is weird to think about. I mean, now I just have absolutely the thinnest hair. To me, it's super thin. <laughs> Here's how thin my hair is, guys. <laughs> like to me, that's so thin. But growing up, I would wrap a ponytail once around my hair and it would stick. Like, like this little thing. It would stick, actually. I mean, it would be at the base, so there's more hair too. But now I could go like three or four times around. Doesn't this look amazing? The ice cream flavor preference is my favorite part because it helped me in a lot of ways. First of all, that's so fun that you're genetically predisposed for certain flavors of ice cream. Second of all, I've always thought people who liked vanilla are stupid. Who wants to eat nothing compared to chocolate? Vanilla is the is a base. It's nothing. Vanilla vanilla ice cream is nothing. So when I found this out that some people just have bad genes, you know, they have to eat vanilla, it helped me respect them more. I'm sorry, that part was all a joke. I just tell things a little too seriously, so in case you did, you thought that was real. Light or dark hair? I did go blonde, but it was like here to here in the early 2000s when you would just do a chunk of hair and that was cute. It was never cute. It says I was more likely to hate chewing sounds. Honestly, looking through a lot of these, it seems like a, a lot more are wrong than right but I think they're a little bit subjective. I mean, can you really be predisposed to hate a sound? I, I guess if they have it on here, these are scientists behind this. Likely bitten more often than others. Absolutely, absolutely. I definitely believe that's a biological thing. First of all, they got it right, and it's gotta be something in my blood because my friend Reagan never gets bitten. I mean, she's just constantly outside and she doesn't have bites and I'm like, 10 minutes and I'll have 20 on each leg. Legitimately, that's not an exaggeration. And, and I'm allergic too, so I don't know if everyone's allergic or if they just naturally swell when you have a certain type of blood, but I'll see a mosquito bite on her and they do not look like how they look on me. They're like, boom. Okay, that was a little big. I mean, they'll get that big on me and just itch and I'll scar for days and I'll just get more the next second I'm outside. It's horrible. I hate mosquitoes. Motion sickness. This one's interesting. I don't think I get motion sickness in general. I love spinny rides. I could be on a spinny ride for hours and I will not throw up. And most people I know can't do that. But you put me in a car 
in a back seat of a car for like more than 10 minutes or in a car that smells specifically like new car smell or leather i'll throw up in 10 <laughs> 10 seconds newborn hair i didn't get this it says likely little baby hair so i wonder if that means here like do i have baby hairs like these are these baby hairs i've always thought those were these little guys that like that is that my baby hair i've had this hair since i was a newborn <laughs> Who has a lot of their baby hair like 20 years later? You're like, I've I've never cut my hair. I have the sneeze, yep. Yeah, every time I look at the sun. Hachoo. Bless me. Likely no red hair. I am not a redhead, but I definitely ah, oh, there's just no way I could get it without the sun. If I put it in like some direct light. I know you guys have seen it because there's videos where I'm in my car um, or I'm in front of my window and the sun hits my hair and it's like red. It, it just looks red to me at least, but I'm not a redhead. Yeah, my pigmentation is white as crap. <laughs> I used to say I was the color of paper. You cannot get paler than see-through. I mean, you can see all my veins. I'm just, I'm a ghost. I think the freckles make me look darker and I got more freckles as I got older. More likely to have stretch marks. Yep. When I got super fat, I had like angry red and purple marks, starch masks. You know what I'm saying? I don't have them anymore um, as i lost weight they became lighter and lighter they were like silver almost and then they became white and then they went away completely but i still have some on my thighs where when i grew taller because they're they're like what, what is this vertical they're vertical and they're on a place where i don't really gain weight and i've never gained weight and they're very light and i have to kind of pull my skin to see them but i definitely get stretch marks when i get pregnant i'm just gonna have the worst stretch marks that is something i'm fully aware of going into i know i get it from my dad's side too my mom has none and neither does my sister but my dad has really bad ones and he's a thin guy he just gets them really bad sweet versus salty was interesting too when i first took it I think it was February, March of 2018 that I got these results back and I remember thinking, oh, they got that wrong. I'm definitely sweet over salty. And then I started thinking about it and I'm like pickles and chips and like ramen and mac and cheese, stuff like that is like my, was my binge food. Now it's really just pickles. Yeah, it's really just pickles. I don't binge as much. My toe length ratio. I'm not going to show my toes on camera. So you're just going to have to trust me on this one. My big toe is not longer. My my second toe is way longer, and I think even my third toe might be longer. I'll check. No way. What the heck? Okay, I'm having an identity crisis. <laughs> my second toe has always been longer. I'm gonna check my other one. What the heck? My big toe is longer on both feet. Can that happen? Can it be different? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna find pictures of years ago of my toes. Oh, maybe it's cause I don't have them on the ground. Hold on. That's what it is. That, that's what it was. When I put them on the ground, my second one's bigger. <laughs> it's so slight, but when I'm just holding my foot, the big toe is bigger. <sighs> I was really scared there for a second. Unibrow, likely at least a little, a, at least a little bit. They're like, please just a little bit. Um. Definitely, that's a definite yes. I think I plucked my eyebrows so badly for so many years I just can't get one anymore. I guess occasionally I'll get one or two little hairs that are like almost to the middle. I mean, I just, I really don't pluck but every other month so I, I, I just don't even notice. But yeah, there's probably a unibrow, a, a unibrow there. The last one this is kind of a boring, lame one to end on because it's weird and it's like esoteric enough that I don't know how to interpret it. Likely to wake up around 8.37 a.m. It's like, <laughs> if I go to bed at three in the morning, I just won't wake up at 8.30. If I go to bed at 10 p.m., maybe with an alarm set, like, yeah. I'm just trying to think of like, okay, someone, someone wildly different than me. So someone is predisposed to wake up at 5 a.m. It's like, if not, not if they went to bed at 1 a.m., but I guess then in this case, they wouldn't be the type of person they wouldn't be able to make it till 1 a.m. Because they, but then does that also have to do with how much sleep you get? Because if I went to bed at 1 a.m. and I could get six hours, I can wake up at 7 a.m. I just choose to try to sleep eight. It's, I, I don't fully understand the wake up time. I definitely wake up at the latest 7.30 every day because of work. And that's if I'm, 
I was up so late that I don't have time to wake up and do my Bible time and make myself breakfast and get ready for the day. So I'm usually up at 6.50 or 7 at the latest. Sorry, this video is kind of lame and kind of, I mean, it's just basic. I just wanted to be cozy and film something fun and more relaxed and I couldn't think of anything significantly spectacular or fun. And I was like, what would be interesting? What do I watch on YouTube that's like, just cozy and fun to relax and watch. And I've watched some 23andMe results and I found them compelling. And so I was like, I will do one on my own. <laughs> you can get to know me that way and we can talk about biology and genetics and in a very limited basic sense. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're cozy and warm wherever you are. I'll see you guys in the next video, which is gonna be a makeup video. Yeah, I don't think I've done a makeup video in three years. I don't think I've done a full makeup look in at least a year, maybe two. Have a happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> it's so weird to say when we're not even close to Christmas, but yeah, have a happy Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your 23andMe results down in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Which ones are right, which ones are wrong? Which ones do you find really interesting because maybe they're so wrong or maybe they're so right? Also remember, I am doing a Q&A that's coming up, not soon because I have to wait till I get enough questions to film one and I have 57 subscribers, so please comment or email me or Facebook me and I will answer anything. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Ow! I need some bye.